anything in history I never heard of and wouldn't be surprised if you haven't either. Today, let's talk about Beatrice Schilling. Beatrice Schilling was born in 1909 and passed in 1990. She was a British mechanical engineer and made some German pilots regret their career choices. For all her life, Beatrice was known as Tilly. Also for her entire life, she was obsessed with engines. As a kid, if she ever had money, she spent it on tools. Which was a good idea, because when she was 14, she bought a motorcycle, which she promptly tore down. But she did rebuild it better. The writing was on the wall. Tilly was going to be an engineer. Yeah, well. The day Tilly was born marked the first anniversary of International Women's Day. It was a time when women were insisting on making history instead of sandwiches. Of course, there were the people who preferred the sandwiches. Well, you and I know that's horseshit. So did Tilly. So she took an apprenticeship with one of the founding members of the Women's Engineering Society, Margaret Partridge. She encouraged Tilly to leave her mark where women generally weren't even allowed. So in 1932, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from what is now the University of Manchester. She was one of only two women in the class. You want to know just how rare that was? Her student card defaulted to Mr. Schilling because there wasn't another option. Women would never be engineers. Clearly, job opportunities were very limited for her. So she got a master's in mechanical engineering instead. But she wasn't only smart. Remember the motorcycle? Yeah, so when she rebuilt it, she included a custom turbocharger. Her custom turbocharger. So one of the first racing organizations in Great Britain was the Brooklyn's Circuit. I am pretty sure that somebody from Great Britain is going to say that I said that word wrong. In my defense, I would like to present to you Suffolk. So don't be giving me shit about British names. <laughs> Anyway, so back to Brooklyn's. They offered a gold star to anyone who could lap the track at at least 100 miles an hour. So in 1936, Tilly hit 106, the fastest time recorded to that point. She was the second of only three women to get a star. Eventually, she did land a job with the Royal Aircraft Establishment, or RAE. At first, she wrote technical manuals for various engines. Then she was working on them. The same year she was promoted to technical officer, World War II. Well, war is profit. Rolls-Royce. They designed what they called the Merlin engine. And two Royal Air Force fighters, the Supermarine Spitfire and the Hawker Hurricane, were quite literally built around that engine, which became a problem. See, the Merlin used a carburetor. I'm not going to pretend to know all the inner workings of an engine, but I can read, and based on my reading, the carburetor was kind of useless during dogfights. But what are dogfights? Well... Two pilots go head-to-head mid-air. They fight like dogs to take each other out. Sometimes to escape or to recenter an attack, they'd execute a negative G dive. Okay, that's not the same as the videos that you see with the Blue Angels making people puke. That is positive Gs. (laughs) No, negative Gs are closer to weightlessness. But whenever an RAF pilot tried to go into a dive, or anything more than a partial roll, the carburetor flooded with fuel and the engine died. It's the big deal, right? I mean, everybody was flying combat. They all had engines. Fuel. Yeah, well. The Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, were using fuel injection. And their engines weren't cutting out in a dive. It was costing Allied victories. And lives. Well, Tilly knew how to improve an engine. So she did. It was actually really simple. The RAE restrictor. It was kind of like a washer. It was a little disc with a hole in the middle. And once it was fitted... Bingo, bango, fuel stayed where it was supposed to. She and her team started going to the different RAF fields, fitting up the planes. It was so simple, they didn't even have to take the planes out of service. It was a quick fix. She did get a reputation. She'd pull up on a motorcycle with a bag of tools and a no-nonsense attitude. Ruffled a few feathers. But the Brits did say she restored Flight Command's competitive advantage in the war. Victories and lives were saved. In 1949... Tilly was awarded the Order of the British Empire for her work during the war, especially on the restrictor. She stayed with RAE until retirement. Engineering, of course. Well, and she worked on a little project called the Blue Streak Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile. It's a fucking mouthful. It was Britain's answer to nuclear threat. She also continued on the racing circuit with her husband. (laughs) Oh yeah, back to him. Legend says she told him she wouldn't marry him unless he won his own gold star at Brooklyn's. They got married in 1938, so it's safe to assume. Tilly has rightfully been honored in so many ways. It might have seemed like a small little disc, but it helped win a war. But I want you to keep in mind that during her time, 
It wasn't a leisurely motorcycle ride through the forest. Women had to fight tooth and nail just to be taken seriously. Regardless of how right they got it, it wasn't right enough. For example, the nickname that men gave her restrictor, it's one form or another of Miss Tilly's orifice. Don't come in here telling me it's not offensive because it's just a joke. Moving on. Some sources said she didn't get promotions that she obviously deserved because she was careless with her appearance. You know, because she dared to dress comfortably with pens in her pockets for convenience instead of making sure that dudes could see her chesticles. She wasn't afraid to criticize superiors or challenge inefficiency. She didn't do anything a man would not have done. But a man's appearance never becomes a part of the equation, does it? Maybe someday, someone else will tell you these stories. Maybe she'll choose to leave out the misogynistic bullshit. Maybe because she'll feel like it's totally unrelatable. Maybe someday.